Hello, I'm John Eldridge, and welcome to the Ransomed Heart audio podcast. For more information on Ransomed Heart Ministries, our resources and events, please visit us online at www.ransomedheart.com. Here we go again. This is the Ransom Heart Podcast. This is Craig McConnell. We do hope that this series we're in, titled Hoping in the Coming Kingdom, is encouraging you. And today we're doing the fourth in this series. And John will be asking the question and sharing his thoughts on what do we do with our kingdom heart? with this heart that was designed for the kingdom, that just pulsates and yearns and hopes for the coming kingdom and a life that we have so much of here and now but won't fully be ours until the kingdom comes. I think this podcast will provoke some deep thinking, some yearning, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. My question is... So what have you done with your kingdom heart? Given all that was being awakened and the reminded of and, and discovered for the first time and hope and promise and, ah, that heart, which is the deepest, truest thing about you, what have you done with your kingdom heart? I am, I am sick of goodbye. I hate it. I hate it. I really hate it. Dropping Luke off at school and driving away was just absolutely brutal. And then we went back for parents' weekend. Well, first, the first time we left, I was absolutely stunned how your life can change with one goodbye. I mean, suddenly, literally, before we were out of the parking lot, Stacy and I realized we are now in a completely new phase of life for the rest of our lives. It just, just simply at goodbye. I was blown away that that could happen. And then we went back for parents' weekend. You bet we did. Um, <laughs> And we got to see Blaine and Luke. They go to the same school. Blaine's a senior there. And so that's pretty cool because they have each other. And, and um, we got to take them both out. You know, they'd lost weight. So we took them both to the grocery store. And, <laughs> and we just got to love on them. We just got to be mom and dad and literally buy them socks and take them out for pancakes. And, you know, it's just sweet, 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 sweet. And, and then we had to say goodbye again. And this time as we drove away, Stacy said, this is the reality for the rest of our lives. We're now in the stage of saying goodbye because we will next time and they'll be home for Thanksgiving, but then it will be a goodbye, right? You know, and see, I was getting married, but then it will be a goodbye and we get to see the grandkids one day, but then we will drive away again. I hate it. It is not the way life was meant to be. What do you do with your kingdom heart? What have you done with your kingdom heart? Because we got to get there so we can get Jesus' ministry to us before lunch, please. <laughs> I want to show you a scene and then do a little reflecting. Um, this is from the movie Act of Valor. I absolutely love this movie. I think I've watched it four times. Except, except for this scene. There is a piece of advice that is given in this scene, which is the worst possible advice you can give to a human being. Now, it's understandable, and there's no judgments, but as you watch this, you've got to realize, uh-oh, uh-oh, I may have listened to that advice myself. This scene comes at the end of the movie. It's the funeral scene. 
for their fallen comrade. And the American flag is over the casket and the Navy SEALs are carrying the casket to the graveside. And you see his wife pregnant with their first child, just absolutely devastated in the front row. And while this scene is taking place and you see a single tear coming down one of the soldiers' faces, the voiceover that's taking place, the advice that's being given by one of the soldiers is to put your pain in a box, lock it down. That's the advice that's given. Put your pain in a box, lock it down, push it away. We are all boxes of pain and memory and loss. Use it as fuel to write your own story. That's the scene that just took place, and that's the advice that was being given. I absolutely hate that scene. That is the worst thing to be telling the world, and especially to be telling those warriors. Put your pain in a box. That will destroy you. It will destroy you. It does. Look at the incidence of divorce and alcoholism and suicide in the military, especially for those on multiple deployments. That is not what the kingdom offers. The kingdom offers something far better. Jesus says, I've come to heal the broken heart. The kingdom heals. And yet, and yet, that's the temptation when you're in it with disappointment, loss, unrealized dreams, right? Shut it down. Shut it down, pack it away, right? Shut that part of your heart down. You don't have to shut all your heart down. You can still be, in other circumstances, a kind of perky person and jovial and great to be with, but you've got massive regions of your soul that you have shut down. And that's horrible. We give up on relationship because it is partial. We give up on friendship because it is partial. We give up on work because it is partial or on a calling because it is partial. When I was on that trip a couple of weeks ago in the Yukon bow hunting moose, we were as remote in the wilderness as I've ever been. The guy that we were with told us that the wildlife will have never seen a human being. Where we were, we drank straight from the Jennings River. We didn't even purify the water. It was a remarkable experience. And I had so much hope set on it. And it was mixed. It was partial. We didn't sleep so well. And um, there are just a number of things about the experience that weren't what I had hoped for. Now, there were some really great things. But man, I was on this roller coaster. I was on this roller coaster of hope and despair, hope and despair every day. And finally, 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 I was out in the field one of those days. I think it was the sixth day. And I'm like, Jesus, you got to catch my heart. You got to catch my heart. And suddenly this verse from First Peter came to my heart. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. And I'm like, fully? I don't even think it's set partially there. I mean, Not in practicality, right? Not really, not in day-to-day living. Now, I believe in the kingdom, and I believe everything I just told you. But in day-to-day living, if you just kind of do a quick check and say, what am I hoping for these days? What am I hoping for these days? You either discover that the answer is not much, or you hope it's going to be a good visit on parents' weekend. And that's a good hope. You hope that, um, I don't know, Christmas is going to be fun this year. You hope that you can take that trip you were planning next year. You know, good hopes, but they're all very, very temporal hopes. They're not kingdom hopes. They're not the anchor of the soul. They're just not. And I was struck by the temporality of the hope that I was living with, particularly in this trip. I was hoping I was going to get a moose, you know, with my bow. And yes, no, yes, no, and lots of thievery and missed opportunities. And it just began to feel so 
assaulted and and I'm like, really, really, set my hope fully on the coming kingdom, fully. And so I asked you earlier, what have you done with your hope for joy? What have you done with it? What do you do with it? And I brought props for my confession. I'm about to make a pretty big confession here. This is one. I have several sunglasses. I mean, these are Maui gems, you know? I mean, not only do they make me look really cool, but I mean, yeah, yeah, come on, right? Very nice. (laughs) This is another, what have I done with my hope for joy? Um, This is a remarkable fly rod. This isn't just any fly rod. This is the new Orvis Helios, okay? Yeah, a little sigh over here, okay? And this isn't just a piece of fishing equipment. This this is a promise of heaven. (laughs) You think I'm kidding, right? Sunglasses, fly rods, and um, I don't know if you've discovered these um, Bequé caramels. You can get them at Whole Foods. They're a salted caramel. You'll notice there's only one left in the bag. (laughs) This is an utterly embarrassing moment. This is what I do with my hope for joy. This is what I do with my kingdom heart, right? I mean, when you lose any real sense of anticipation of the kingdom coming, you go looking for something to ease that ache, right? I would love for you to take a second look at the magazines you subscribe to or that you pick up at the store. And I don't mean pornography. I mean, what are the magazines that you get in your home, right? Architectural Digest, Williams-Sonoma Catalog, Southern Living, right? You know what they are, right? They are narcotics for the kingdom heart, right? Because they promise the coming of the kingdom. Mine is the Drake magazine. It's a fly fishing magazine. Exotic locations all around the world. Seriously, right? What have you done with your kingdom heart? You've given it away to all of your less wild lovers. You've given it away to all of your attachments and medication and addictions, right? I mean, come on. This is what we do. Right? I mean, television, just something to numb the soul? Or daydreaming about that trip you're going to take? And those are good things. By the way, that's a great magazine, and those are fantastic caramels, and, and this fly rod casts really, really well. You know, there's some evil things. It's just, I gave my kingdom heart to them. Right? It's like, where do you take... Where do you take your kingdom heart in a world like this? Oh, man. But mostly what we do, mostly what we do is we go to survival mode. That's what we do, really. Those are our um, medication on the side for the most part. What we really do is we go to survival mode, right? We get busy. We get busy, get stuff done. You know, just throw yourself into something. If that's your survival mode, that's not everyone's, right? Some people's survival mode is to get lost in other people's sociodramas, right? Because it distracts them from their own. So they just serve a lot and kind of get lost in other people's stories and they care for people, you know, excessively, right? Survival mode. I think I would describe my survival mode over the years as striving and indulging. Just attack the day, get my to-do list done, hit life hard, and get home in the evening and have a little caramel. (laughs) It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Oh, my goodness. Right? We go into our survival mode. This is what Jesus was saying, was he who seeks to save his life will lose it. Your survival mode is extraordinarily damaging, by the way whatever it is. Um, Survival mode typically looks like shutting down most of your desires, 
shrinking them to a size that something in this world can fill and then trying to find that something, right? Meanwhile, just sort of scrambling to try and keep control of your life, whatever it is you do to keep control of your life. And so survival modes are as beautifully designed and as uniquely elegant as all of our fig leaves, but they pretty much serve the same thing. They're the way that we try and pacify our kingdom heart in this world, right? Because you're made for that. We're made for that. And nothing, nothing will satisfy us but that. Whoa. There's just times when these podcasts and the topics, whether it's a live conversation or an excerpt like this, that I listen to them and drawn into God in a way where I just long and yearn for more of Him. That was my experience of this segment of our resource called Hoping in the Coming Kingdom. And if you'd like to get more of this topic, join us at RansomedHeart.com. Check out our store. This resource is available exclusively through Ransomed Heart. But you'll find a lot of things that will just provoke, encourage your heart and your walk with God. Do hope that this series is encouraging you and hope you'll join us next week in this series on hoping in the coming kingdom.